Uh, now, Shetland's new gas plant opened today. It is the biggest construction project in the UK since uh, the Olympics, and it's going to supply two million homes with energy. But Britain needs clean energy too, and as southern England and Wales are battered by Storm Imogen, Lucy has met some scientists who have a new way to turn that wind into power. The energy we produce underpins pretty much everything we do, from light to communication, transportation to manufacturing. But the way that we create power has radically changed over the past few decades as we attempt to wean ourselves off fossil fuels. So inevitably, the future of how we produce electricity is leading to more and more creative ideas to harness the power of the elements. And it's here at Bradwell in Essex, in the shadow of one of Britain's first nuclear power stations, that a new way of using wind power to generate electricity is being tested by flying kites. A company based here in Essex is pioneering new technology to try and increase the production of energy using wind. Bill Hamilton is leading the project. So how do you generate electricity from a kite? Well, when they start to fly forwards, they produce a huge amount of tension on the tether. That tension then rotates a drum at the bottom that generates electricity. We have two kites, so one's generating power by flying very fast forwards, while one of them's sitting above your head, being pulled in very gently. Once the, the generating one's finished, it goes up above you, and the other one flies out and starts to fly very fast forwards and generates electricity. So it's two engines, one then the other. So the stuff for generating the electricity is not in the kite, it's on the ground? No, nope, it's all down there, so it's easy to access. There are sensors attached to the kites to keep them away from each other to prevent tangling. But there's also the environmental impact to consider. What about birds? Is there an issue with them colliding with these things? Uh, there was an early study done which, which suggests that they're going to be, uh, have a lot less impact than the traditional horizontal axis wind turbine. And during the next stage of the project, we're going to have a bird watcher and looking for how birds react around them. OK, so here is one of the prototype kites. Now, this is about 12 metres squared, and today the guys will be flying it at around 300 metres to comply with air traffic control regulation. But if they were flying it offshore, they would be flying it at about double that height. Once the kites are in the air, data is collected to show how much electricity is being generated. So obviously constantly analysing the yeah, data that you're yeah. getting from your, your two kites yeah, that yeah. are out there. That's one kite and the other kite, the blue and the red. So basically above the line is where they're generating, below is where they're coming back in. The other thing we can do is we can start looking at how they're performing as they fly at different altitudes. So we can, we can literally change where they're flying depending on what the wind conditions are. Can it get too windy? If it's very windy, these kites come and park up above us. Um, basically, in, in an extreme storm, the, the kites can still stay up there because uh, on their normal day-to-day -day business, they're flying around at around 200 miles an hour. How much energy can they generate? Uh, this rig can generate up to 40 kilowatts, which equates to about 15 houses. And with larger ones flying higher, they predict around 30 kites could produce enough electricity for nearly 75,000 homes. But will this sort of technology ever get off the ground? Andrew Smith is a researcher at UCL Energy Institute. Does this have what it takes to become a real power solution? Well, Britain has uh, the North Sea with lots of wind, a massive resource there, and a lot of that is shallow, which means we can build up from the seabed with traditional turbines. Lots of other countries have much deeper waters straight off the coast, for example, Japan. And there, something like this that could be mounted on a floating platform has lots of market, lots of opportunity and not much competition. What are the challenges of this system as you see it? Well, we've seen the small version working. The big challenge is in scaling up. And you only find out what the problems are when you double and double and double again. And as they do that, they'll find new ways to break things and hopefully new ways to fix things. So there's a lot of trial and error. It's the only way. But if all goes according to plan, Bill and his company hope that their kite farms will be offshore producing electricity by 2025. When it comes to renewable energy, it's possible that the sky really is the limit. Lovely. Thank you, Lucy. Wow.